welcome everyone. Uh, look forward to connecting with you in the Q&A session. Uh, but as James said, we're going to start off uh, with uh, a brief overview of the degree programs on offer across the school. Uh, and then we can all um, uh, discuss and respond to people's uh, questions uh, later on. Within the policy and governance program, of which I'm the director, we, we offer four distinct degrees. The Graduate Certificate of Public Policy, that is a, a six month, a one semester full-time degree. The Master of Public Policy, which is a two year full-time degree. The Master of Public Administration, which is a one and a half year full-time degree. And the Executive Master of Public Policy, which is a one year full-time degree. The Graduate Certificate, is a great option if you want to upgrade your qualifications, but you aren't quite ready to commit to a master's. You can take any four subjects uh, that interest you from across all of Crawford's degrees, and later you can get credit for all of your uh, GCPP, your graduate certificate units, if you decide that you'd like to upgrade to a master's. And if anyone's interested in taking on this challenge in semester two and you do it full time, you'll be able to do the graduate certificate fully online uh, because I think, um, as most of you are aware, all of ANU's courses uh, in semester two will be uh, available in fully online mode. The Master of Public Policy is the two year master's degree and it's designed for people who want to start or advance their careers in the public sector with a particular focus on policy analysis. Our graduates can be found working across federal and state government agencies, NGOs, advocacy groups, and in various UN and international bodies. The degree offers a wide range of specializations in different policy areas, uh, enabling you to really sink your teeth into uh, sectors uh, that are of interest to you, or uh, sectors that you'd like to um, uh, build your career in. And it is possible uh, to graduate with two specialisations. Uh, graduates with relevant backgrounds can earn up to a year's worth of credits for past studies. The Executive Master of Public Policy, uh, for those of you with the appropriate backgrounds, is a one year program designed for emerging public sector leaders. So to be admitted to this degree, you need at least seven years of relevant uh, experience in the public sector, in government or in other public sector agencies. It's an interactive program uh, that draws uh, from a lot of case-based teaching and on participants' own experience. Uh, for those of you who are interested, um, very happy to field inquiries later, it's not update and the information is not available on the website yet, but from 2021, this degree will be available fully online. The Master of Public Administration, uh, I'm very excited to announce, is a degree that will be relaunched in 2021. It's a brand new one and a half Master of Public Administration that's designed for public sector managers. And this is perhaps the main point of distinction between the MPA and the MPP, the MPA is more focused on management uh, and the MPP uh, tends to focus more on analysis. But in reality, of course, both in, at senior levels of uh, public sector agencies, both skills are, of course, uh, both capacities are really important and there is a lot of cross-fertilisation across the degrees in the electives that uh, you're able to take. Uh, the MPA, the new MPA, introduces a series of applied masterclasses in leadership, strategy, and financial management. And this is an opportunity to get skills uh, and learn from practitioners as well as ac academics, people who are really at the coalface of management and policy making. Um, Students will also complete the MPA with a capstone project, either an internship for people doing the degree full time and with limited professional experience, or as a practice based work based project uh, for those who are already employed in the public sector. Uh, so that's it. That's a snapshot of our four degrees and look forward to uh, fielding questions that anyone has later on.
Li Gang, uh, there you go, you're on. Okay, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Li Gang Song. I'm the head of uh, on the Coden Department of Economics. Uh, the department is uh, uniquely positioned in the College of Asia Pacific. And uh, as uh, you, uh, you know, later on, we have a you know, wider range of uh, country and area studies. The department also uniquely positioned in the public, public policy school. So therefore, you know, we have a very strong policy orientation in terms of uh, our teaching. So basically our principles of, uh, of uh, offering those degrees, uh, number one is about uh, uh, very solid uh, theoretical underpinnings. The second one is about uh, you know, the policy, uh, actual policy studies. The third one is that we uh, equip you with a very, very stringent and rigorous quantitative uh, 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 methodology and skills. And with that one, so let me just go through with you uh, about the three things. <clears throat> Number one is, uh, move on the page, next one. Yeah, so this, I see. This is the, uh, I think Ben <laughs> mentioned uh, that one in a sense, no. So graduate certificate in public policy. So in this uh, uh, area, we are, uh, you know, it's kind of a certificate. You do, uh, it's not a full uh, degree courses, but you do, up to three or four courses uh, uh, for doing that one. Uh, most importantly, you know, in the sense is the, uh, is to give you some kind of a retraining in economics for policy discussion and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and understanding the policy debate. And uh, you can complete this uh, certificate in uh, within one, uh, one semester. Of course, you have to do it as a full time. And uh, by doing so, that can give you the, uh, the pathways for those uh, with the economics and the non-economics background, meaning the pathway you can do a bit of a full degree later on. So we'll give you the, the necessary background for, for doing that one. Uh, this can uh, be offered in the semester two, uh, 2020 uh, this year, and, uh, and also online. The, uh, you can use this degree as the basis for further economic master studies. So that means that you take the, the certificate but you take the credit and uh, for, for doing more uh, master degrees later on. The second one, let me focus is on the master of uh, environmental and resource economics. So uh, as you can see from the title, that the environmental and resource economics is a very popular subject that can expand your economic analysis. It's kind of a capacity to advance at a special level, focus on the environmental and the resource issue and uh, uh, subjects including the water, agricultural resources, and et cetera. So therefore you can develop the expertise for applied economics, for env environmental and energy policy issues. We do have a world-class uh, 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 scholars and uh, focus on those issues and uh, energy issues in particular. And again, study online in the semester two. Again, that is the credit you can apply for the, uh, I mean, if you have a, a prior study, you know, we can consider, you know, giving a credit for completing this, uh, this degree. <clears throat> the uh, Master of International and Development Economic is our main degree offered through uh, the Cotton Department of Economics. So uh, for doing that one, you know, as you can see from the title, uh, as a clear focus on the international and the de development aspect. But we do also have a few uh, specialization. And uh, in doing this degree, you learn to apply analytical frameworks to economic policies for trade. This is uh, you know, with the long history of, uh, of uh, teaching uh, trade issues in the department, uh, finance, uh, international finance as well. And importantly is the open macroeconomics, which again, as you know, is a very popular uh, subject. And uh, we also have a world class uh, uh, expert in teaching uh, foreign aid and, uh, and the development issues. And the development, again, at the different levels, you know, you can do this from a preliminary level to a most advanced course in economic development. And uh, you can, as I mentioned, there's a specialization in the development studies and the policies. There's also clear focus on the regional economies of Asia and the Pacific 
like uh, you know, scholars are specialized in Indonesia economy, the Chinese economy, the Southeast Asia economy, and the central. The quantitative skill is uh, also a very important part of our training. So after you got a degree or during the training, uh, you know, getting that degree, you will have, uh, you know, through, you know, preliminary mathematical uh, 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 courses, but also you can, you can, uh, you know, get this uh, training in the, uh, in the econometrics and also the case study in econometrics that become more and more advanced uh, in doing so. And uh, study online in semester two this year, and uh, almost like all the courses now are being offered is online. And uh, again, if you have a, a prior study in the, in the economics or the related area, we are taking into account about by pr providing some credit for you. So all these uh, the, the degrees and uh, the, uh, in the offer and uh, we, we treated the students experience uh, very in a very important way. So therefore, it's not just a, you know, passive uh, learning uh, in uh, enrolling in those courses, but you interact with our staff in the, in the learning process. And uh, that experience will be, I think it's very, very valuable for you and uh, for your study, but also for your future uh, career development. So that's a brief uh, introduction, and I'm happy to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to answer your questions at a Q&A session later on. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi everyone. Um, since it's Reconciliation Week especially, I'd, I'd like to just start by acknowledging the traditional owners on whose country I'm speaking from today to all of you. So I'm just going to say a few words about um, the first two programs that are mentioned on this slide, the Graduate Certificate in Environmental Management Online and the Master of Environmental Management and Development. So. Um, those are two programs taught from our group and there's a third program that we co-teach with the Fenner School of Society and Environment, which Beck will speak to um, after I'm through. A general um, comment about all of those programs is that our graduates work in all sorts of fields quite similar to what Ben flagged actually, but with more of a focus on environment specifically, environment and development issues, so in government, um, in policy or regulatory positions in the private sector, um, civil society organisations. So quite a diverse set of outcomes for our graduates. Um, so starting with the graduate certificate um, in environmental management online, this is a new program that's um, being supported by the government's um, higher education support package, which is available to domestic students. Um, and it's a really, um, it's highly subsidised, so you can see there um, four courses um, that would be undertaken in semester two 2020. Um, if for some reason a student wanted to do less than four courses and finish off the certificate in 2021, that would be permitted, but the subsidy would no longer apply um, after 2020. This is like their COVID relief package for the higher education sector. Um, so it's for a limited time. Um, the courses in this, we've put together a really interesting and sort of very practical set of courses. Again, we're working with the Fenner School of Society and Environment, dealing with things like disaster management, ecotourism, food security um, and society and environment relationships. So quite an interesting program there that's been sort of purpose built um, this year, but actually draws on our existing offerings. Um, and then the Master of Environmental, oh, actually similar to the Public Policy Graduate Certificate, any courses that are undertaken in the Graduate Certificate can also count towards a Master's if you get excited enough to carry on to some further study. Um, so the Master of Environmental Management and Development, which I'll talk about briefly now, um, is a program that sort of broadly aims to boost um, the careers of people working or interested in working in natural resource management, environmental policy in a host of different sorts of organisational settings. And it's very much about improving your professional capacity, 
to deal with complex challenges because as we all know, working on environmental governance, environmental policy is a very complex and multi-dimensional sort of process. And our program is available fully online or on campus um, or a combination of those. So um, one, I guess, thing that sort of distinguishes our program is that it's a highly interdisciplinary program. So I think this is another really important way in which we think about working on environmental issues. Um, because when I, well, when I was an undergrad, one of my lecturers said to me, managing the environment is about managing people. And so we really turn our attention to that side of environmental governance. We've got people in our program who are economists. I am a human geographer. Um, we have anthropologists. So it's a very diverse set of perspectives that we think are quite important to equip professionals in this field um, and to really work on critical analysis skills, trying to understand environment from a political, social and economic dimension. And there's also um, electives that can be picked up that deal more with environmental science in the Fenner School. Um, yeah, so I guess broadly the program aims to kind of build critical thinking as well as practical skills um, to work on some of the really challenging issues that we're facing. So we, we all actively research and um, in areas like climate change, pollution management, um, we've got quite a body of expertise on natural resource management, things like water, forests and land. Um, and so we bring all that into our courses and really kind of practical case examples. We, we like to draw that into our teaching quite a bit. Um, yeah, we work, our group works in Australia as well as in the Asia Pacific. So we can kind of move between regional and Australian case examples quite a bit in our teaching as well. So that's just a very brief overview. And I might um, I'll just check I've covered all the points there. And yeah, so we, um, the credit for prior studies, I think I touched on that, not only if you did the grad cert, but also we do look at um, kind of your past study record and often are able to sort of find areas where we can give you credit. We are eventually moving to a um, one and a half year full time program. But at the moment, it's a 96 unit program. But yeah, we're fairly generous with credit um, for study in related or cognate areas. So I might hand over to Beck now. Thanks. Thank you, Sango. And hi, everybody. Um, I'm piping in now because I'm an academic co-convener of the Master of Climate Change alongside Professor Jamie Pittock at the Fenner School. So the Master of Climate Change is a really cool program. It's multidisciplinary as it must be if we're dealing with a complex issue like climate change. And in taking the Master of Climate Change, you go over some foundational concepts that cover environment and society interactions, as well as environmental science. And then you move into the core climate change courses. So this is where you'll study international climate change policy and economics, domestic Australian climate change, um, policy and economics, adaptation, vulnerability, impacts of climate change and climate science. You also do uh, an independent research project. So we try to get you to do this at the end of the program is it's a place where you can really integrate all of the things that you learn and synthesize it and build your new contribution, your new um, expertise in the area of climate change that is of most interest to you. And so you take these foundational courses and the climate change courses and your research projects and a bit of research methods in the lead up to that. But you've also got a fair bit of latitude with electives as well. So you can tailor the program to suit um, a specialization, not a formal specialization, but if you are interested more so in the policy aspect or the social dimensions or climate science or the impacts. So we also will approve for other courses, if you look at our elective list, it's quite broad, but we also can make it broader than that if you find other courses from across the university that you can make a case for being relevant to your program. So 
Similarly to Sanger's comments about the Master of Environmental Management and Development, this is a research-led course. So some of the teaching staff that you'll come into contact with are me. So I'm a social scientist and I'm interested in climate, energy, environmental policy, and in particular, social conflict and the role of identity around these issues. I'm an intergovernmental panel on climate change contributing author. You'll also come across Professor Jamie Piddock. He's the other academic co-convener at the Fenner School end of things, and he focuses on environmental governance and adaptation and the nexus between climate change and water. I'm Professor Frank Jutso, who's here in the Crawford School as a specialist in energy and climate policy, and in particular, um, the role of economic reform to deal with climate change. He's an IPCC lead author. And Dr. Joelle Gerges, who's a climate scientist, she's the author of Sunburnt Country, which um, you might have seen in the bookstores a couple of years ago. Um, and she's also an IPCC lead author. We also have at the ANU, the ANU Climate Change Institute, which um, works across the university and they focus on engaging our climate change researchers with the media and with the policy sector and with um, industry and they host a whole suite of public events. So the Climate Change Institute is another part of the university that you'll get embedded with. It's standard, a two year program, but you can get up to um, the equivalent of one year course credit if you've got Cognate study. Um, and it's really fun. So it would be great to see you in this course.